You know, I suggest you look up YouTube because it's quite funny. <clears throat> so, therefore, it's um, basically great pleasure that I open the celebration tonight. So, thank you all for coming. <clears throat> I would like to invite the Reverend Raymond Bethan of the All Saints Anglican Church to join me on stage to bless the proceedings, please. Thank you so much. I've never heard my name called Reverend Baffin, but I think I like it. I think it'll grow on me tonight. Also, I would really like to congratulate the British High Commission for this beautiful night. Isn't it good to be very close to God's nature and not be stuck in a big building? So, you know, sometimes we forget how beautiful God's creation is and it's how we should enjoy it. In May every year on the 1st of the 26th in the Anglican Communion worldwide we are celebrate on this day Ascension Day which is recorded in the book of the Acts of the Apostles. This was after Jesus' resurrection and his final departure after his earthly ministry. As you know, he was taken up to heaven to take up his seat at the right hand of his Father's throne in heaven. And while the disciples still had their eyes fixed up to the sky as Jesus ascended away, Two men dressed in white suddenly stood beside them and said, Why are you looking up to the sky? This Jesus who was taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way that you saw him go up into heaven. So the Feast of the Ascension is a glorious feast day. A day to celebrate the triumph of God in Christ and that this triumph of means that our sins and weaknesses are indeed forgiven. But it's not a day just to fill us with joy, to leave us staring into he heaven, waiting for Jesus to come back, to heal all that is broken, and to undo every injustice in this world, and waiting for God to act in our lives, in our church, and in our communities. But the ascension of our Lord indicates that there is no work to be done by us. The intention of our Lord is a feast that is intended to transform us from not just being observers or spectators, but to be active members of this work that he has entrusted us to do. The ascension is meant to transform us from people who only receive and only use up into those who go out and give, those who go out and act as true disciples of Christ by proclaiming his word and to carry out the church mission not only by our words, but through our loving actions towards one another. Friends in Christ, don't simply receive and consume, give and act. In the ascension we say goodbye to Christ's body presence on earth because we are now called to that presence. To see me, we will be celebrating Her Majesty, the Queen Elizabeth II, 96th birthday, and of course, 
her platinum jubilee, the seventh anniversary of Her Majesty ascension to the throne of the United Kingdom. Seventy years ago, God chose Queen Elizabeth to take up her earthly throne and with the Holy Spirit guiding her as the wind beneath her wings, she still reigns at the age of 96. There's a great leadership proverb that's only quoted and you would know by John C. Maxwell, which says, He who thinketh, he leadeth, and hath no one following him, is only taking a walk. In the Gospel of Matthew 20, 28, Jesus says, Such as the sin, Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Here, Jesus says, the leader is the one who serves. A kind reminder from Jesus to us this evening who hold positions as leaders. God save the Queen and long live Her Majesty. Let us pray. God our Creator, when you speak there is light and life. When you act there is justice and love. God, the source of all authority, Bless Queen Elizabeth and her family and the family of nations she upholds. May she remain a worthy focus of our loyalty and point us unfailingly to a higher commonwealth. The true humanity to which she and all her subjects O allegiance, for you are the God of nations, you are our God. We make this prayer to Jesus Christ, Amen. Thank you, Reverend. Two minutes, that must be a record. For my Scottish accent gets slight, I think Robert Louis Stevenson will be turning in his grave as we speak. And thank you. I'd now like to welcome the Honorary British Consul, Taola Papa Brenda Heather Lato, to the stage for a few words, please. How was that pronunciation, okay? I think you've got the heather part very well. Ona wa maea, ma fa'amu mua, mea i matau tu sa. Ai walanga si leo e faima fufonga tau mumoli. I le afiona le hai komusina o peritani e tili, ma ai alani i matu. Le sunga ya David Ward, ma fa beatu. O te manatu o le a sa otu i moana le a tata o maunga shala fai, ma sa afi yai le mali toa. I ma malu fa le lepa e tua fa sanga mau yai le lipi lipi ti alonu. A wapa ia le popo, ma pa le solo. O ma malu maulunga na no fui ai au otu otu i le tawha tutusa o le mauta. A fio maia, le pa ia maulunga o le au vala aulia ma sa amua o potu potu a i meisi. Le susu le pa ia o le tala le lei o le awe i papa au la usunga le usiolanga Reverend Raymond Beetham of all saints in the church. Ile fio lo fionga, Mr. Awali, lo fionga ile su tanimia, 
ma le mamma lo ha le cabinette. Il è fiolo, fiume, il è famosino sili, ma il suo male va segno, o lì i matematici sono i famosini. Il è fiolo, il è fiolo, il è mamma lo, ma il lungo o le fono uso, a Samoa. Il è fiolo, il è fiolo, il è fiolo, ma il è fiolo, 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 o Stalia, Saina, Japani, Malimalo, Tele, o America. Ma sui essi mei fa la potuzona, fa e tu malo, pei onetato fa tassi, ili nei e fiaffi. O pa ia fa le anga nu, ili a fua mei saua, se ia pa ia ana lenga. A wa a inga ma tama, tama fo e ma a inga, tu mo ma pule, i tu au ma la taua, a inga le tai, ma le vaa fonti. O le faa moe moe ma wolunga, o le nei a fiafi. O se a vanoa e faa ma natu ai, le asu soi fua, o i le si peta, le lua, o le tupu te mai tai, o perta ani e tele. Wa a toa nei le iwa sfuru ono tau sanga, o no na soi fua, ma wa a toa foe, i le tau sanga nei, le fitu sfuru tau sanga, Talu ona whaapale ma vala awina o ia e avea ma tupu te mai tae i le tausanga a fe i vasi lau li manua. For the non-Samoan speakers amongst us or even the Samoan speakers amongst us, I have just um, welcomed the dignitaries who are present today, our nobility, and all of our honoured guests. Um, according to them, our traditional honorifics, and also committing this, this event for his honour and his favour. May you all have an enjoyable evening, and I'll be back to send you away safely at the close of our proceedings. Have a good evening. Thank you to all Papa. Could I please ask everyone to be upstanding for the Great Britain and some more national anthems, please? <laughs>
Thank you. <coughs> Please be seated. I'd now like to invite His Excellency uh, David Ward onto the stage, please. Honourable Acting Prime Minister Tuala Josefo Ponifacio, Reverend Beetham, Honourable Members of the Cabinet, Honourable Members of Parliament, Your Excellencies, Members of the Diplomatic Corps, Leaders of the private sector and of the voluntary sector, ladies and gentlemen. Fafetai tele, mole taliaina, ole vala aulia, e tala ao mai, ilanei afiafi. Afifio mai, maliu mai, talofa, talofa lava. Ladies and gentlemen, 70 years is a long time. In 1952, it was in fact longer than the average British man could expect to live. It would then have been 66 years was how long he would have expected to live. Ladies could have expected to live for 71. And the world in 1952 was a very different place from today. I would like today to think a little about some of those things which have changed and some of those things which have not changed. Let's consider the changes first. The population of the whole world was how much? Five, three, four, two point six billion people. Now, even while some of those two point six billion people are still alive and with us, the world population is closer to 8 billion in one lifetime. The population of the United Kingdom in 1952 was 50 million and of Samoa, 87,000. There were 2.7 million pet dogs in the United Kingdom in 1952. Now, I wonder, might there be an expert in the audience who might know how many pet dogs there are in the United Kingdom now? Not 35 million, not quite. 12.7 million. Halfway there. Um, there were only 3.5 cars per 100 people in the United Kingdom in 1952. Now there are 50, one for every two people. Only 17,300 people graduated from university in 1952 in the United Kingdom. Last year it was 659,000. My degree has been devalued. <laughs> the maximum salary, and there was actually a salary cap, the maximum salary for a professional football player in the United Kingdom was how much do you think in 1952? Any ideas? How much? £20,000. It was £14 which is about 45 tala. And that was in fact twice the national average wage. There's been a little inflation since then. Uh, but how much do you think the highest earning professional football player in the UK earns now? A week. Half a million pounds is correct. And that's just his salary from playing football, as well as you know, on top of that he will get his income from advertising and sponsorship and everything. He, his football salary is 800 times the national average wage. Um, in 1952, sugar, butter, cheese, margarine, cooking fat, bacon, meat and tea were all rationed in the United Kingdom, a legacy of the wartime history. And there was as yet, in 1952, no James Bond, no Beatles, no Harry Potter, and no Paddington Bear. Now, this will age some of you if you recognise these. Instead, there was Dick Barton, Joe Loss and his orchestra, the Beverly Sisters, and Rupert the Bear. Anybody remember those? Dick Barton, special agent? No. Have Rupert the Bear. He's still published, actually, uh, in the, I think in the Daily Mail. Um, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom was Sir Winston Churchill, 
of Australia, it was Sir Robert Menzies, and of New Zealand, Sir Sidney Holland. Harry S. Truman was President of the United States, and Josef Stalin, the leader of the Soviet Union. The United Kingdom had one TV channel in black and white, which broadcast for six hours a day, which was the BBC. And IBM had just started to market the first commercial computer in the world, which was available to rent, not to buy, to rent, for 12,000 US dollars a month. That's equivalent to 120,000 US dollars of today. I think you will agree that there have been one or two changes. But some things, perhaps some of the more important things, have not changed. On the radio, the BBC, the world's longest running soap opera, an everyday story of country folk, The Archers, was already in its second year in the United Kingdom, and now it is approaching its 20,000th episode, with one of its original cast, June Spencer, still playing the same part at the age of 102. Agatha Christie's play, The Mousetrap, the world's longest running stage play, opened in the West End, and it completed over 28,000 performances in its initial run before having to pause due to the COVID pandemic in 2020. It has restarted since. Since the death of Richard Attenborough, who was one of the original cast, in 2014, I'm not sure whether any of the original cast members are still with us, but I know for a fact that one of the original audience members is, because that was my father. And he didn't tell me until I bought him tickets to go and see it. And I asked him, who do you think did it? And he said, well, I know who did it. I said, well, thank you for telling me. And, uh, um, but speaking of things which have not changed, and even closer to my home, Newcastle United, my new local football team, defeated Arsenal 1-0 to win the FA Cup in 1952, and appropriately defeated Arsenal last week to deny them a place in the, champ in the Champions Cup. I hope you will agree, therefore, that many of the most important things in life remain unchanged. <laughs> uh, but I'm honoured today that you've joined me today to celebrate the life and work of one who has come to embody, paradoxically, both change and continuity through those 70 years. And I'm speaking, of course, of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. As my colleague Robert said, she, mentioned she ascended to the throne 70 years ago this year. In 1952, her fresh and youthful vitality made her a symbol of renewal and new beginnings uh, for a people still recovering from wartime. Yet the institution she embodied was one of continu continuity, which had prevailed not just through that war, but also already for hundreds of years. Her life and work since has symbolized that almost paradoxical combination of change and continuity. Since her reign began, she has known 14 US presidents, 13 British prime ministers, including every single Labour prime minister there has been in the United Kingdom, 10 presidents of France, five popes, and six archbishops of Canterbury. Um, when she was born, the most advanced form of transport in the world was the airship, and she has lived long enough to catch a train to France and meet three people who have walked on the moon. And despite not having a passport, she has become the most travelled head of state in history, having visited 110 countries, many of them several times. I hope that she has contributed those elements of renewal and continuity to relations between our two countries, the United Kingdom and Samoa too, where her visit in 1977, in the year of her Silver Jubilee, was the first by a reigning British monarch but built on a long history of UK-Samoa relations. I know that there are some of you here in the audience this evening uh, who remember that visit and can remember meeting her on it. There are some pictures, indeed, uh, of that visit over to my right, and I hope you will all take a look at them. I know that uh, she herself enjoyed the visit and still has sharp memories of it, and in a way, that visit symbolized both the renewal, the first visit of its kind, but the continuity of relations between our two countries. Uh, she was awarded the Grand Order of Vailima by Samoa, Samoa's head of state, Malietoa Tanumafili, whose official residence this house then was, this house having earlier been built by the famous British art author, Robert Louis Stevenson, who in the 19th century uh, lived here, swam in the pools nearby, and rejoiced in his Samoan soubriquet of Tusitala. 
Earlier this week, I was delighted to be joined by representatives of the Ministry of Natural Resources and the Environment and the Samoa Conservation Society in planting a tree to commemorate the Queen's Platinum Jubilee uh, in the Botanical Gardens, just over there, um, just as she herself had planted a tree on the occasion of her Silver Jubilee visit in Samoa in 1977, and just as Robert Louis Stevenson did on his land, what was then his land, here around us. I hope that she will be pleased to know that the tree planted in her honour, a Talafula, Talafula tree, a native tree of Samoa, once common but now rare, but which is the only host of the beautiful Samoan butterfly, the Pepe Ai, um, uh, um, well, that was one of the trees, that was the tree which I planted, and it is the only host of that butterfly which, because of the tree's rarity, has disappeared from Samoa. Hopefully, by planting it, uh, we will begin the road towards encouraging that butterfly back. It's still in American Samoa, so not far away, and be a fitting tribute to Samoa's natural heritage. Uh, the High Commission is also supporting the Vailima Botanical Gardens zoning project, which will create barrier-free access routes through the botanical gardens, allowing all people uh, to enjoy and learn about Samoa's national, natural heritage in the botanical gardens. We are always keen to find opportunities for our two countries to work together. In the two years since the British High Commission opened here, uh, we have worked with Samoan partners to support a variety of, of projects, from tree planting, the piloting of carbon footprint auditing, the provision of COVID relief, the promotion of animal health, the initiatives to reduce and eliminate domestic violence, and to promote literacy in prisons, amongst others. One of our current projects is to promote the rehabilitation of prisoners preparing to re-enter society through art, uh, hoping that those who have a talent for art may be able to access classes and materials and therefore earn an alternative living when they leave prison. I am grateful to both the Ministry of Police and to Samoa Stationery and Books for working with us on that project, and I hope that you will enjoy seeing some of the fruit of that project at the back, where we can see some of the works by those prisoners. In international affairs too, the governments of Samoa and the United Kingdom work together to promote our shared values and common interests. We have worked together, particularly in the last year, on climate change, where we both share ambitions for uh, 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 and, and we both share the high ambition that the world should achieve the targets set in the Paris Agreement of 2015 to reduce carbon emissions to zero by 2050. We work together as governments on many international stages, and tonight uh, it is a, uh, the, uh, we are in one sense unfortunate to be missing the company of the Prime Minister, but fortunate in another in that she has left the country in order to attend uh, amongst other things, the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in Rwanda, uh, where I am sure that all 53 members of the Commonwealth will agree that in two years' time they will come here to Samoa for their next meeting, and Samoa will be able to welcome up to 50 world leaders uh, to Apia to discuss their common interests and their common objectives. But I want today to celebrate in particular the cultural, grassroots and people-to-people -people links which exist between Samoa and the United Kingdom and show the full breadth of our relations. Gathered here today, I see before me some of the upstanding examples of active British citizens in Samoa, and uh, Samoan citizens are increasingly active in public life in the United Kingdom too. I'm sure many of you know that uh, it is a Samoan player, Manu Tuilani, who has been a cornerstone of the England National Rugby Union team for many years and a British sporting goods company which sponsors the Samoan Rugby Union team. Later this year, the Samoan Rugby League national team will play in England in the opening match of the Rugby League World Cup, again in my hometown of Newcastle. There's a running theme here. Um, and Samoan athletes will also be going in the next few weeks to Birmingham to take part in the Commonwealth Games, where I wish them good luck in returning with more gold medals than they did in their previous uh, Commonwealth Games. One of the most famous celebrity television chefs in the United Kingdom is also a Samoan, Monica Galetti, who herself was contributed in a small way to this evening's celebration and the celebration of the Jubilee at home because she joined the judging panel 
which took the decision on the winner of a competition to design a new dish to celebrate the Queen's Jubilee, a dish to be known as platinum pudding. We hope that this Samoan contribution to the Queen's Jubilee will be a lasting, a lasting legacy of this celebration, but you yourselves will be able to judge that later, for after the main food has been brought out, we will have samples of platinum pudding for you to enjoy. And we have a range of British and Samoan food for you to enjoy. Samoan taro, British scones and cream, Samoan beer, British beer, IPA and bitter, English sparkling wine, which you're about to enjoy as I raise a toast. Um, and food including food from the start and the current moment of the Queen's reign, for we have platinum pudding to celebrate her jubilee, but also coronation chicken, the dish invented for her coronation banquet in 1953, earlier on in the evening. I hope also that you will be entertained by a sample of popular music from Britain and Samoa over the seven decades of her reign as we eat. But before all that, I ask you to recall once again the subject of our celebrations, Her Majesty. In 1947, at the age of 21, she pledged that her whole life, whether it be long or short, would be devoted to our service. We know now that that life would be a long one, and we have benefited from that long service. She has indeed set a model of duty, discretion, and indefatigable service. And one of those things to which she has, which she has served and to which she has contributed have been the relations between our two countries. And so I would like you to join with me in a moment, as soon as the glasses spread out among the tables <laughs> and, uh, and someone brings me a glass, um, to join me in a host and in a toast uh, uh, to the government and people of Samoa and the strong future of our relations. Manuia. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellency. Um, I would now like to invite the Acting Prime Minister, the Honourable Tuala Yasef. Sorry. The Honourable Acting Prime Minister onto the stage, please. Can I try it again? Sorry. Cabinet Ministers, Members of Parliament and the Judiciary, our former Prime Minister, Excellency High Commissioner David Board, Members of the Diplomatic Corps, Guests, uh, Ladies and Gentlemen. On behalf of the Government of and the people of Samoa, I thank the British High Commissioner, Your Excellency David Ward, for the invitation to join you this evening in celebrating the 96th birthday of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, as well as her platinum jubilee, marking 70 years since accession, accession to the throne in 1952, as well as service to the Commonwealth. Today allows us the opportunity to celebrate and reflect on Her Majesty's historic reign. Her Majesty the Queen has endured seven decades of dedicated service to the people of the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth, making her the longest serving reigning British monarch 
in history. A remarkable achievement indeed. Her Majesty's years of reign represent strength and stability to the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II's Platinum Jubilee depicts the many years of tireless and selfless service reflected through her commitment and dedication to her people, country, and the Commonwealth. And so, it is only fitting that we do come together to mark this significant occasion. Through the Commonwealth, Samoa and the United Kingdom share a special relationship. Through our common history, shared values and mutual goals of prosperity, democracy and peace. Samoa was fortunate to be one of the countries Her Majesty visited in 1977 on a Pacific tour to mark a silver jubilee and we anticipate with great pleasure another visit from the British monarch when Samoa hosts the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in 2024. Later this month, the Honorable Prime Minister Fiume Naomi Mata'afa will join the Commonwealth counterparts, including the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom in Rwanda at the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. The leaders will celebrate again the shared values of the Commonwealth members being freedom, democracy, and respect for the rule of law. Excellencies, Samoa has been part of the Queen's Commonwealth Green Canopy Program for a number of years now, signifying our contribution to the ecological restoration of the greater forest, building resilience against climate change, and expanding our two million trees campaign. I wish to thank the British High Commissioner, who together with a senior member of government official from the Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment, planted a tree early this week at the Vailima Botanical Gardens to pay tribute to the 70 years of service by Her Majesty the Queen. The ceremony was concluded with the announcement by His Excellency that £10,000 will be contributed to the development of the Botanical Gardens. Ladies and gentlemen, the Queen has served her country, the Commonwealth, and her people. Tonight, we remember her, and we pray for her, and we celebrate her achievement of a jubilee, um, platinum jubilee, as well as 96 years of her being in the land. I would like to ask you to join me now in the toast um, to the Queen. Please charge your classes. We wish Queen Elizabeth II prosperity and may God save the Queen. Yemen Ria. David could ask you to join us on stage, please, for the cake cutting.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Acting Prime Minister and um, Your Excellency. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to take up much more of your time. Just quickly to say that we'll now be circulating with sort of food and drink. Um, in addition, we'll have a bar at the back, as well as a sort of whiskey tasting um, <clears throat> bar um, in the far right-hand corner. We've also arranged three 15-minute tours of the Robert Louis Stevenson Museum for up to 20 people at a time. So please do come up to the front if you would like a tour. The museum's uh, extremely interesting. Yep. And Olé. something that Robert Louis Stevenson said when Olé. I read a presentation Olé. that was put together Olé. by Dr. Olé. John Atherton, who I'm sure many of you know, and um, resonates, me, uh, resonates with me since I've arrived in Samoa. The morning is such a morning as you have never seen. Heaven upon earth for sweetness, freshness, depth upon depth of unimaginable colour, and a huge silence broken at this moment only by the far away uh, murmur of the Pacific and the rich piping of a single bird. You can see what a relief this is. It seems a new world. Ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy your night. Thank you. Thank you. 